Have you ever looked out of a plane window, noticed those little vertical fins on the ends of the wings and wondered, what are those things even for? They look small, almost like decorative tips, but they're actually one of the most important aerodynamic inventions in modern aviation. They're called winglets, or sometimes sharklets, depending on the design. And believe it or not, those little fins help airlines save millions of dollars in fuel every year, reduce carbon emissions, and make your flight smoother and quieter. But how can something so small make such a huge difference? Let's find out right here on History of Simple Things. To understand why airplanes even need those little fins, we have to start with what wings actually do. A plane's wing is designed to generate lift, that upward force that keeps it in the sky. When air flows over and under the wing, it moves faster on top and slower underneath, creating lower pressure above and higher pressure below. That pressure difference is what pushes the plane upward. But here's the catch. That same pressure difference also creates a problem. As the high-pressure air beneath the wing tries to escape to the low-pressure area above, it curls around the wingtips. This curling motion forms swirling air patterns called wingtip vortices. They're like little horizontal tornadoes trailing behind the plane. You can sometimes even see them if the air is humid, tiny spirals of vapor dancing in the air as the plane takes off. They look beautiful, but they're bad news for efficiency. These vortices create something known as induced drag, a kind of resistance that makes it harder for the plane to move forward. The engines have to burn more fuel just to fight that drag. So, in a sense, every plane is flying with invisible whirlpools of wasted energy spinning behind it. And for decades, engineers have been trying to tame them. The problem of drag isn't new. In fact, engineers have been obsessed with it since the earliest days of aviation. Even in the 1920s and 30s, designers noticed that the shape of the wingtips had a big effect on performance. Some tried rounded tips, some squared, and others curved like bird wings. Each change helped a little, but the vortices never fully went away. The idea of adding vertical fins to control those swirls actually came about in the 1950s. A NASA aerodynamicist named Richard Whitcomb started experimenting with the concept of wingtip devices. His research showed that by adding a small angled surface at the end of the wing, you could redirect the airflow in a way that reduced the strength of the vortices. But the technology of that time wasn't quite ready for it. Fuel was cheap, and airplanes were still relatively slow compared to today's jets. So the idea sat on the shelf for a while, until the world changed. In the 1970s, something major happened. The global oil crisis. Suddenly, airlines were desperate to save fuel. Every drop mattered. This pushed the aviation industry to revisit old ideas, including Whitcomb's winglets. When fuel costs skyrocketed, saving even a few percent of drag could mean the difference between profit and loss. NASA tested Whitcomb's design on several aircraft, and the results were impressive. Adding winglets could improve fuel efficiency by up to 5 to 7 percent, a massive gain in aviation terms. By the 1980s, Airlines began to take notice. Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, and later Airbus all began experimenting with their own versions. And just like that, those funny little fins became a serious business advantage. So how exactly do they work? Imagine air flowing over the wing as a smooth stream. Without winglets, that air rushes around the tip and spins into a vortex like a small whirlpool of wasted energy. But with a winglet in place, the airflow is gently redirected upward and outward. 
the winglet essentially diffuses the vortex, reducing its intensity and smoothing out the air behind the plane. This means less induced drag, less turbulence, and better fuel efficiency. Think of it like swimming. When you move your hand through water, you create swirls that slow you down. Now imagine shaping your hand so the water slips off smoothly instead of swirling behind you. That's basically what winglets do, but at 900 kilometers per hour in thin air, 10 kilometers above the ground. The result? The engines don't have to work as hard to keep the plane cruising. That saves fuel, reduces emissions, and even cuts noise during takeoff and landing. Of course, not all winglets look the same. Different aircraft use different shapes depending on their aerodynamic needs. For example, the Boeing 737 MAX uses a distinctive split-tip winglet that points both upward and downward. This design helps balance airflow more efficiently. Airbus, on the other hand, uses sharklets, tall, smooth fins with a slight curve, inspired by shark fins cutting through water. They serve the same purpose, but with a different aesthetic and aerodynamic twist. Other aircraft, like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, don't have visible winglets at all. Instead, the entire wing bends gracefully upward, forming a natural wingtip extension called a raked wingtip. It achieves the same drag-reducing effect but integrates it into the structure of the wing itself. So even when you don't see a winglet, its spirit might still be there, just shaped differently. Let's put the benefits into perspective. A large commercial jet burns thousands of liters of fuel on a single long-haul flight. Even a 5% improvement in efficiency can save hundreds of liters every trip. Multiply that across thousands of flights every year, and you're talking about millions of dollars saved per airline. And it's not just about money. Every ton of fuel burn produces roughly three tons of carbon dioxide. So reducing drag helps airlines cut emissions too. It's one of the rare cases where a business improvement also helps the planet. That's why nearly every modern aircraft today includes some form of wingtip device. It's one of the simplest, smartest innovations in aviation. One that passengers barely notice, but the environment certainly does. So the next time someone asks what those things are, you'll know the answer. They're not just decoration. They're the unsung heroes fighting drag, saving fuel, and keeping us soaring smoothly through the sky. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.